I'm Scott Ellis. And I'm John P. Now, you know all that 3D information that we're gathering up? Well, somebody's got to put it all together. Kubit's got us covered. Welcome to Geek Beat. Did I get a little bit too enthusiastic there? No way, this is that? something to get excited about. Was, this is very cool stuff. I think Dave likes to complain when I like scream at the <laughs> microphone and peek and that's why I told him to get a limiter on. compressor thing or whatever. <laughs> something technical. Knock you down a little. I don't understand all these technical things to be honest, but we have a man here who does. We've got Scott who is with Kubit and I, I literally am amazed by the things you do. It's, I feel like the caveman lawyer from uh, Saturday Night Live, you know. I don't understand your world. It's okay, I'll, I'll try to help you out today. So you guys, uh, so we've had all these different people coming through the Geek House over the last few days, mm. and they are mapping things and lasering things. Right. Uh, I don't even know what happens, but there's a lot of data generated. Yeah, it's a ridiculous amount of data. Um, you've seen the laser scanners and all these things collecting billions of points, and uh, you know, the, the problem with the end users is, what the heck do we do with all these points once we have them? How can we make sense of it? How can we get value out of this data? So that's kind of you know, our job. That's where we come in. So you guys, uh, so if I understand it, and I don't understand much, but um, if we just went and set up one little scanner or maybe took our phone and pointed it at one thing mm -hmm. or whatever if we had one little point that we were trying to map out mm -hmm. probably could use some kind of fairly simplified approach to doing so but right. when we take 8500 square feet of space and mm -hmm. we try and document document every square inch of it that's where you have to combine things together mm -hmm. into like one what do you do how do you do that well, there's a few processes. So first is just the data capture, and that really has become the easy part. I mean, I know you all are kind of interviewing people throughout the day on uh, uh, collecting the data, and it's kind of so simple. You take photos, you can press a button on a scanner, and it collects, just paints the room with points, and uh, you know you can, can send a monkey to do the, the scanning and, and data collection. Uh, the problem they let is, me do it. Well. Just keep Close, one point. Step, just like one <laughs> DNA like thing right up above the chain there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you need tools to extract information from all of this data. And so we use things like pattern recognition and shape extractions, all these things that I don't understand either. I leave that up to the, the Germans and their little bit of magic yeah. algorithms to uh, sprinkle on. Um, but that's what we need to extract information from this data. Um, we do it inside of the Autodesk world, so our, we make plugins that work inside of AutoCAD and inside of Revit. So for I think you guys have a lot of users that are probably CAD folks out there, yeah. and so they'll see our menus in addition to their normal AutoCAD menus in there, uh, where they can take all the scan data and, and make something from it. So it's a little bit hard to visualize if you haven't actually seen it in action. Right. Um, but before we dive into that, there's mm -hmm. more to this than just sort of putting rooms together, right? Mm -hmm. You're mapping out in detail mm -hmm. everything that's in a space and then able to turn that into what kind of useful information and metrics. Yeah, and there's a few processes. So the data capture is the easy part. Then you have registration, which is also now becoming very easy and more automated. Um, by registration, what I mean is if you have, uh, like yesterday, the folks out scanning position after position after position, those scan positions, you know, each one is made up of millions of points. They have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. They're absolutely individual little projects on their own. So what we have to do is take this one and this one and this one and make them all connect together in a common coordinate system. And that's registration. We okay. still have nothing to do with that. But once that part's done, that's where we come in. Everything is nicely pieced together, you know, and the puzzle's all put together nicely. And then we can extract information from it in AutoCAD and Revit, like, like those types of design environments. Okay, now just to clarify, you say we can do this now, mm -hmm. but you make plugins right. for like AutoCAD and other applications right. that do this. So when you say we, you mean in general, we as in the population of people who, who do this particular type of skill. We the people, yes. Right, right, okay. <laughs> Not your company, you guys don't get. We don't you, do the services, make, yeah, exactly. we make, make yeah. the tools, right. Okay, so. If, if, if I wanted to, I would go and 
just download a plugin and install. I didn't even know. I'm so stupid. I, I love AutoCAD. I didn't know you could get plugins for AutoCAD. Uh, yeah, they have a great um, developer network, for third parties, and uh, it's amazing how many companies survive off of just that Autodesk yeah. by making third party because Autodesk is a, a gigantic tanker ship. Yeah. They can't do everything, yeah. so it's like Photoshop, uh, yeah. which yeah, I know exactly. you, you get plugins for that. Lots of them. All right, so they got to serve the masses, and our job as third party guys is to make tools that to help out and make things faster. Um, you know, based on the job at hand. So I would guess that uh, in that in that AutoCAD world, there are plugins that are for specific needs for different industries and things like mm -hmm. that. Are there particular industries that your software is more designed for or that use it more heavily? Yeah, typically we say AEC, architecture, engineering, construction. Okay. Um, you know, also folks working in the plant world. Our, our home office for the U.S. is in Houston, so oil and gas is, is big for us. Um, but our, you know, we have plugins that, that reach out to the heritage community, preservation, archaeology, uh, building design, and also uh, plant and industrial facilities. That's kind of our bread and butter. Okay, so what happens is uh, you have people that go out and they gather a whole bunch of data, mm -hmm. and then they like have it sitting in a directory on a computer, and they're like, now what? Yeah, absolutely. They're at a standstill at that point, and there's some things they can do. They can pull measurements from the data. They can, um, you know, they can visualize it. But if you actually want to get something of value somewhat efficiently, you, you really do need a set of tools to help you do that. And so, I actually have a, a video that kind of takes us through. I don't know if you guys yeah, want me to yeah, let's to, take a look. I'd do like it. it up. I think it'll help people um, see what you're yeah, so describing. Yeah. So, in other words, we help people go from from real world to to CAD or BIM, building information models. So you can see the model overlaying with the, all that point data on screen. Um, and the way that I was just trying to explain earlier was really you start with your scans in the field. So you have all these individual scan positions popping up. And what we have to do is bring all those scans into a common coordinate system. So that's what we're doing here. And once that's uh, completed, you can then bring it into a program like Autodesk Recap. Okay, And now it's in the Autodesk world. You're ready to use all this data inside of any of your normal Autodesk, AutoCAD, your Revit, your 3D Studio Max, you can bring it in directly. This is all native now inside of the Autodesk world. Okay, I have to ask you, how big mm -hmm. are these file sizes? Because with all the data this creates, yeah. these have to be monster files. You should have some, some terabyte drives for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. Okay. Um, but That's what I thought. Yeah, they're, they're fairly large. Is um, that the Geek House? That, is that, that what looks familiar. Yeah. Yep. And so here, you know, we want to isolate the, just the house, let's say. Uh, we just clip out the house, and, and this is AutoCAD. So most people think of AutoCAD as I'm going to draw my 2D plans, my 2D elevations. Uh, not the same AutoCAD that uh, that your dad was using. You know? Yeah, right. Um, this is a, an amazing 3D environment now, and it's the same for for, for Revit as well. Um, here I just kind of did a slice, and right away, if someone wanted to make a floor plan, they could easily start. Wow, that is awesome. Out. Yeah. Um, you know, to add some what we call pattern recognition, if I want to do a, uh, you know, the line automatically fits to the cloud in that case. So it's just sort of playing around there. So I'll kind of scoot ahead if you guys. That want is me to. that is crazy that you make a 3D scan and then convert it into a real. Fl you don't even need to measure. I mean, it's like no, well, it, some people want to measure, some people want to. I mean, you can. Yeah. But I mean, it just depends what you need to do with the data. Yeah, sometimes right. visualization and measurement is, a, is enough. So, What are all those little bolts? Uh, is that every scan that was done? That's every scan. And so this is what we call scan navigation in, in our point sense package for AutoCAD, which allows you to jump into what the scanner saw from that point of view. I so, thought those were for Christmas, maybe, I guess. Right, yeah. like little Christmas Hang those on the trees, if you like, yeah. <laughs> These are the optimal points. There's up desk central with all the desks in it. This is kind of cool. This is uh, what we have for like structural extractions, structural engineers. Um, there's a beam in the room. You don't know what size it is, what type. Well, we make it catalog driven. So it's not just going to pull out a uh, normal shape, but it's actually going to pull something from a catalog here. So it tells me what uh, AISC member it is from a catalog by clicking Okay, I don't points. even know what that means. <laughs> I don't either, but it's pretty cool. It's something it a structural like engineer would know. And, and Although perfect. in that case, that beam, there's actually a pole hidden inside of a thing, so it probably can't really... Uh, it was a pole with sheetrock around it. But if it was an exposed 
pole or beam, I guess, it could look in the catalog and go, oh, I think I recognize that. Right, right. I kind of had to fake it for yeah, <laughs> yeah. throwing it together. Okay, now this but, is cool. We looked at this, you and I looked at this earlier. Uh -huh. Kind of describe what's going on here because it's very neat the way it works. Yeah, so if I asked uh, someone to zoom in and, and give me the actual corner point or the edge of the wall, you would see nothing but little, little points there, and it would be really difficult to tell which one you're grabbing. But if we apply planes onto the surfaces and ask it to determine where our corners and edges are, and we can now precisely tell you know, where the corner point, where the edge of the wall is. Th these are the types of what we consider essential tools mm -hmm. to be able to really grab uh, accurate information out of, uh, out of the data. So, You uh, saw this earlier? You've been I, saw a little, I saw a little, I saw this piece, because oh, okay. it was cool. It's like painting the wall, but no, we're actually just painting the planes so we can find the corner and, and the algorithm the does that, right? Okay. Very cool stuff. Um, this was from the UAV that was used. Um, uh, they were flying the drone yesterday, and one of the, uh, the nice things is it, it can generate the point cloud, you know, from all of the images. Oh created. my God! Look at that! Wow! Yeah, and that's I mean, again, in AutoCAD, it's ridiculous. But one of the limitations of this technology is, as you zoom in, you can see that the, the scan data is not quite as dense as some of the other data we were just looking at. Mm -hmm. But it takes the pictures, so we can use the pictures, overlay them on the scan data, and now if you draw on the picture, there's our trailer. Yeah, you can draw on the picture, and it and it shows up in 3D. That is on crazy. The point cloud. Okay, so now that for me the next logical question, I'm seeing all this the very cool geek house building come to life in 3D. Mm -hmm. Are there applications yet? Have people begun to uh, marry this with something like the Oculus, so that if I'm in a faraway place and I wanted to look at something in the geek house, if I'm an engineer and see mm -hmm. something, can I kind of come into this model and fly through it and see it like it's right in front of me? Well, it's funny. I, I get that question uh, pretty often, but you know, if the Oculus and I don't know the answer, if it integrates well with Autodesk software. Absolutely. Um, Autodesk makes a product called Navisworks, which is used for design review, uh, 100%. And you know, you put the the Oculus on, and you can walk through a facility with your your client or whatever it is uh, in 3D. You're looking at the the real world environment. It's That's amazing. That's awesome. I think we're like one step away from a holodeck now. I know. <laughs> You've got some stuff on here that doesn't look like the Geek House. <laughs> We right, yeah. I have that many pipes. No, no, there was no <laughs> boiler room or anything like that. I added in some extra stuff so you all could see. Some oh yeah, this is uh, that's down in our basement right yeah. there. That's right, where, right, right. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, that's Ken's office. <laughs> that is Ken's office. This is actually for like a piping designer, an oil and gas. If they wanted to know, you know, what size pipe, what what fittings are there, we can tie it to a, an actual catalog, and it tells me it's this size pipe, you know, carbon steel 150, blah blah blah. This size elbow, this type of flange. Huh. All just from points. That's insane. Yeah, it gets real nerdy real quick. All We're right, all well, about it. <laughs> I guess uh, now that we know how, how this stuff got assembled, I mean, we watched everybody map it out, but that was not really the hard part. The hard part was now taking, a, a, what do you think, like a trillion points, uh, you know? Uh, I haven't looked at the totals, but it's, I'm guessing it's still in the millions, but... Uh, a lot. Nearing the billion, yes. Yeah. The, the easy words, a lot. What is the, the resolution? How fine of a point can you get down to? Assuming that it's all going to get bigger and bigger in terms of data, but... Yeah, it d depends on the sensor. Um, but, you know, some of these scanners can get, you know, down to a millimeter, or, you know, oh, wow. plus, plus one or two millimeters. That should the, be enough The detail. software yeah. is not the limitation. Right, like right. Your plug-in and, Auto, and AutoCAD, they don't care how detailed you want to get as long as you got enough compute power. Right, right, and and these things all require, you know, very uh, hardcore point cloud engines to be able to handle this much data. So that's something like the Autodesk team has done a really good job in the last few few years is building an engine that can handle billions of points inside of the the standard design environments like like AutoCAD. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. All right, so if people want to grab your plugins to extend their Auto de uh, AutoCAD experience, yes, where do they get them? Uh, go to qubitusa.com and uh, you fill out the form and we'll, we'll set you up. So got any CAD gurus out there that want to give it a shot, we Sounds welcome good. it. All right, awesome. well thank you Scott, appreciate you joining us. You guys, thanks for sticking around. We will uh, see you later on. We've got more coverage coming up and you can ca get it all if you're just seeing this one video by going to geeky.tv forward slash 3D Palooza. So see you guys soon. Thumbs up on YouTube. For us. No. Oh, so nice. see. Wait, you, you, point cloud. What exactly yeah. does point cloud mean? As and you, you scanned, scanned the decals everything. inside and out. Now that surprised me actually because I yeah, 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 exactly. It gives you those really great, beautiful Michael Bay cinematic shots.